everybody, Chelsea here with Heidi Wolfig, one of our Waste to Wonder artists. Uh, we're in her home, her studio space, and she's going to talk with us a little bit about her work in our recent exhibition. Hello everybody, to the audience, uh, parents, children, art lovers, artists. Anyways, uh, this is the first time I'm being videotaped, so I'm very shy. And uh, a little bit about me, I was born in Argentina, I came when I was 10 years old, and I always had aptitude for art. Uh, but it wasn't until 2007 that I actually started painting my very first acrylic painting, a portrait of my niece. Before that I was doing uh, watercolors, uh, gouache, illust illustrative work, and I was thinking of doing book illustration. But anyways, um, then I started teaching art for a nonprofit and going to schools after school and during school. And uh, there's when I designed a class that had to do about our environment and all the throwaway plastic that was in floating in the ocean. Um, that I got some books from the library and my eyes were opened because of all those islands of plastic floating in the ocean. And that's where that gave me the idea of um, doing the dolphin in distress uh, project that you saw at Resource Depot. It, I wanted to use recycled products mostly as is and I barely bought anything to do that. I had to buy a six pack of beer to put a crushed beer can there and the little duckling on top is used to be my children's and they're like 40 years old now but I saved it. So uh, I was, it was so much fun to do it. I used almost everything that I had at the house. A hose from my swimming pool business, the pallets from the pavers, tarps, um, bubble wrap, a lot of things that I got from Resource Depot also. Um, just anything I could find my hand at and it came out really very nice. I did it after the COVID outbreak when everybody was staying home. I started it and it was a great way to get my mind off of things. So that's, um, and it came out beautifully. And uh, before that I had done the Nefertiti Reborn also with most things also from Resource Depot. This was a plain um, bust in dark color, nothing, no face, nothing. And I, I used a lot of items that I had already, per, not purchased, but some I purchased and some I got for free at Resource Depot and I had it in my art studio room. A little room I have here in the house full of junk. It's nice to be versatile in art. So we don't get just stuck in the same thing. We have to have fun. Definitely. And reusing stuff always creates a new challenge for artists. Um, to figure out how to use stuff. Yes. Um, do you think that art can change a community? Yes, but it also has to start from the beginning. A lot of being creative thinkers, and it all starts also with the children because that will be the future community. What all the children right now are the future. Sometimes when it's um, an adult, they already have their mindset, they're already into purchasing and throwing away stuff. You can't change them that much, but you at least you try and leave something. This all this that I'm doing is to leave a legacy, at least to feel like I, it was worthwhile here. Definitely. Um, what or who is your biggest inspiration? I don't have one per se inspiration. The only thing that gave me a break when I was younger is my art teacher in Park Ridge, Illinois, at South Miami High School. We did not have that much money. My parents were not thinking of sending us girls to college because we were going to get married anyways. And uh, he said, there's a community college in pa uh, Palatine. They are not expensive and they have a very good art stu uh, uh, studio. So that is how I got my foot in the door. And I told my parents, I didn't ask, I told them I wanted to go there. And that was a good thing that I did. But then in life, things happened and I uh, spent many years not doing anything of art while I was raising my children. And, but I started again because I learned that you don't lose it. I was scared at first, but you don't lose it. I think that's inspiring because I think a lot of people get caught up in doing, you know, life. Yeah. And it's hard to keep an art practice going. Yeah, and right now I am caught up in my other business, but I'm focusing very, very hard to get some money in because I have a, a huge two-car garage I really want to do as a studio, also to be able to teach there. And um, 
and eventually not do the other business, which is very stressful. With the art, I just have fun, de-stress. It's uh, what I want to do as I grow older. Is there anything else you want people to know um, about your work or, or about your piece at Resource Depot in particular or anything? Well, when I first found Resource Depot, it gave me a lot of inspiration because all the possibilities, because I'm always, you know, ideas, if they crop into my head, I put them in, you know, I, they, I keep them there. Uh, many times I'm driving in the expressways going to different jobs and that's where I'm in this mode of what you call it, uh, I don't know what it's called right now, it doesn't come to mind, but this in-between mode, of course I'm paying attention to the traffic, but this is where also a lot of ideas come to me. Everybody has it differently. That's how it comes to me. Definitely. Inspiration works different for everybody. We've gotten some great reactions to your piece. I think the scale of it and the creative use of the materials just really grabs people. And hopefully that message is relayed. Thank you very much for your opportunity to have this video. And it's a great experience for me. Maybe the next video I'll be more at ease. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Heidi. You did great. Thank you. Everybody go and see the Waste to Wonder exhibition.